Thank you very much. The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion 7806 in the name of Ash Denham on Small Business Saturday 2017. The debate will be concluded without any uh, questions being put. I'd encourage all members who wish to contribute to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Ash Denham to open the debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm very happy to be leading the debate this evening on Small Business Saturday. For, uh, from the time that I was a young girl, I saw firsthand the hard work, the sense of pride and determination that generally goes into running a successful small business. Between my parents and then my grandparents, I experienced what it takes to run a small kilt shop, um, a video shop, and a horticulture business. And probably what was my favorite as a girl was my grandparents' sweet shop. Um, in my youth, all the effort that went into these enterprises was evident. And now as a member of the Scottish Parliament, my interaction with small businesses seems to have come full circle. I've had the pleasure of visiting and shopping at many small businesses across Edinburgh Eastern, where that same determined drive to work hard and that same sense of pride that I saw in my family's business is there unmistakably. In fact, Edinburgh Eastern has seen what the FSB has described as an explosive growth in small enterprises, with a 40% increase since 2010. Small Business Saturday is taking place this weekend, and it's an opportunity to celebrate that growth and also to help sustain it. For Edinburgh and for small businesses right across Scotland, because our small businesses are, are absolutely fundamental to the Scottish economy. It's um, supported by the Federation of Small Businesses, and interested businesses can sign up on the Small Business Saturday website. And that means that when people visit the website, they can find out more about the range of businesses that are available in their area that are taking part in Small Business Saturday. Small and medium-sized enterprises account for about 99% of all Scotland's businesses. And within that, 1.2 million Scots are employed by these firms. The livelihood of countless people who reside here and to an extent our nation's economic productivity very much depend on the vitality of our small business sector. And that's why Small Business Saturday is not just a one-off day to visit a couple of local shops whilst shopping at large online retailers the rest of the year. No, it's an opportunity for Scots to acquaint themselves with the local businesses in their area, to find that new favorite shop, cafe, restaurant, pub, or other retailer. Get to know the local products that you love. Tell your friends and family about them and then keep going back the rest of the year. That localized network of support is what keeps our local businesses thriving and we need them to continue thriving. And most importantly, the money that's spent at a local business is more likely to stay in that community, benefiting the people that live there as well as our public services. Across Scotland, you're bound to find any number of unique businesses that cater to a wide variety of tastes and interests. There's something literally for everyone. But I would be remiss at this point if I didn't highlight some of the fantastic work that's going on in my own constituency. And as I mentioned before, Edinburgh Eastern has seen many businesses grow over the last seven years, from Portobello's High Street and Promenade to um, a number of new developments that are happening through the Craig Miller Regeneration Project. So there's no short supply of businesses to mm. experience there. But I'll mention just a, a couple of them that I've visited over the last few week, weeks. So one of them is Belfield Brewery. So they're just around the corner here from the Scottish Parliament in Abbey Hill. And they are the first dedicated gluten-free brewery in the whole of the UK. They were founded by two celiac friends who thought that they would be able to produce a great um, gluten-free beer, and they have indeed gone on to do that. It's a family-run brewery, and it's made it its mission to develop a um, small batch craft brew certified gluten-free beer that tastes um, as good as the real stuff, if not better. And I've tasted both their Lawless Village IPA and also their Bohemian Pilsner, and I can say that they have succeeded in their aim to develop a great tasting beer. Belfield is just shy of being in business for two years now, 
Um, they've already landed a number of awards for their beers. Um, one of the ones that they've won, uh, they were a finalist in the Aldi Scottish Beer Awards, and their Lawless Village IPA was named UK country winner in the specialty beer, that was the gluten-free category, in this month's World Beer Awards. And the Bohemian Pilsner um, received the second place, um, sil was a silver winner. And both beers have also won top awards in the London's Free From Food Awards this year as well, so they're becoming very successful. They've also just um, got a contract to sell through Aldi, and they'll be selling both of those beers through the 75 stores across the country. So if anybody has any celiac friends that are at the moment distraught about having to give up good craft beer um, for their health, they don't need to, and that you could always purchase them, some of Belfield's brews, this small business Saturday, and send them along to them. You can also order a Belfield beer to go with your meal at a couple of small businesses in the constituency, the uh, Portobello Beach House Cafe, and also in Portobello, the Skylark Restaurant. But in this digital age, when more and more is done online, especially shopping, small businesses don't need to just be bricks and mortar either. And indeed, Belfield's brews are also available for purchase online. But another business that I've visited recently is called Urban Twist, and that is a creative design company headed by Cameron Pitcairn, which has its studio based in Meadow Bank, also um, not far from here, and it supplies its customers through its, um, its own website. Urban Twist specializes in personalized gifts, wedding stationery and jewelry. And a big seller this year um, that I saw that I thought was very cute was personalized Christmas tree decorations in the shape of Christmas jumpers that you can hang on your tree. And when I visited them recently, I also like they do um, a large framed um, family tree to which you can add the names of your immediate family, which would obviously make a great gift as well. So I think people that are looking for unusual personalized Christmas gifts couldn't, uh, could do worse than to look at their online catalogue, which is urbantwist.co.uk. There are two, these are just two of the nearly 1,600 registered small businesses in my constituency, and collectively they provide for a vitality and livelihood for the whole of this side of the city. And I want to conclude by offering my gratitude for the cross-party support in recognising Small Business Saturday. I appreciate the contributions of the MSPs that are going to be taking part today, and I'm encouraged that we can all come together and support small, business, um, small businesses across the country, support Small Business Saturday. Last year, there was a 15% increase in the campaign, and hopefully this year we can do even better. So I would encourage everybody to get out into their communities, to shop local, and help boost Small Business Saturday even further. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, there's a huge level of interest in this debate, so I would encourage all members to keep their contributions as tight as possible, below four minutes, that means, Ms Bailey. Uh, I call Gillian Martin to be followed by Alison Harris. Gillian Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is the first speech I'm doing with an electronic iPad, so let's hope it all goes well, because I'm a bit of a Luddite. I thank Ash Denham for bringing this members' debate to the Chamber, and it's good to see so members taking part. Like my colleagues, I'm keen to use this as an opportunity to name-check and celebrate small businesses across my constituency, including the towns of Turriff, Ellen, Invuri, Meldrum and Mintlaw. In Aberdeenshire, we're seeing more small businesses been set up than ever before. The region's got a proud history, the towns and villages with small businesses that are visited from afar. The number of enterprises with up to 49 employees in Aberdeenshire is an estimated 13,800 people in total. And that accounts for a Scottish employment of 49,500 people. And the number of inter enterprises with 249 staff is 240, which represents Scottish employment of 12,730. I'd like to pay tribute to a business in Ellen which uh, only recently, just in the last couple of weeks, was named Employer of the Year at the Pride of Aberdeen Awards, and that's Phil Anderson Financial Services. He's a living wage employer, and through the business, Phil and his staff also give back to the local community through sponsorships and charity work. And I, I noticed in the local papers that he, um, in celebration for the award that he won, he's taking his staff to the States on an all expenses paid holiday. So uh, yeah, bosses out there, uh, look at what Phil's doing and maybe you'd like to give your staff a nice Christmas present this year. Um, the business only started six years ago and now has offices in Aberdeen and Caith Ness. Um, and are an, uh, an example of how a very small local business can, can grow and thrive. Earlier this mon uh, month, just round the corner in Ellen, Cara, uh, Kira Piri, 
won an award for her success running the chocolate bar in Ellen. Kira was given support from the Federation of Small Businesses and from the Prince's Trust Fund to help run the premises. With dedication to her craft, Kira was named Retail Manager of the Year at the Evening Express Retailer Awards. And she's one example of many people who are so important to the local economy of Scotland's town. In my home village of Newmarker, uh, one of my favourite businesses in my constituency is uh, Kilts Wahey, who I've mentioned before in this chamber, run by Lindsay Ritchie, who's turned her hobby for sewing into a full-time business and is a global ambassador for this part of the world um, as our products are sold all over the world. In five years, she's built a thriving business which expects an almost one million turnover by the end of this year, which is an incredible achievement for someone who started out making kilts in our house. And I, finally, I would, I would like to uh, point to the success earlier this year of the Inverurie Business Association, which is made up of small businesses in the thriving market town of Inverurie. After some incredibly hard work, their application to become a bid town was successful, with more than 80% of the businesses voting to support it and keep Inverurie one of Scotland's best retail town centres. I also want to mention a, a small business where it's a collaboration of other small businesses, which is Glam in King Seat, um, owned by Gillian McLeod. Gillian has opened her doors to other small uh, beauticians and hairdressers and therapists who all work out of the premises in King Seat, including uh, my own fabulous hairdresser, Elaine Cornish, who will probably, be, if she's watching this, be screaming at, at the monitor. Um, but I, I want to end by just giving a huge cheer to the micro-businesses, particularly those in the creative and craft industries who are filling our towns and villages with uh, Christmas fairs. Many of these are women-led, and as the, the convener of the cross-party group on women in enterprise, I have to mention them because there's a wealth of talent and display in our artisan and craft fairs right now across the whole of Scotland. If you want to buy Christmas presents that you know that no one else will duplicate them uh, under the tree, go to Christmas fairs and take advantage of the, the hugely talented people out there that are uh, keeping those craft fairs going. I just want to end by saying we should support all of these that, people as we begin our Christmas that's four shopping, minutes, Martin. but most importantly throughout the whole year. Thank you. Alison Harris followed by Stuart Stevenson. Presiding officer, firstly, I wish to declare an interest as I'm the owner of a small business, a chartered accountancy firm. I'm delighted to take part in a debate this evening on the annual Small Business Saturday, an initiative which is now in its fifth year and has steadily raised the profile of small businesses throughout Scotland. Over the last five years, the number of small businesses in Scotland has steadily risen to a figure in excess of 360,000. Although this sounds good, this figure, per 10,000 head of the population, is well below that in the rest of the UK, albeit this sector is playing a growing part in the Scottish economy. Scottish Government figures show that as at March this year, 1.2 million people are now working for small and medium-sized businesses in Scotland, accounting for well over half of private sector employment in Scotland. Whether from sole traders, partnerships to small and medium enterprises, this spirit of entrepreneurship is at the forefront of making a more dynamic Scotland, paying for public services, making us a more prosperous country and providing the jobs that so many of our fellow Scots depend on. Government also has a part to play in continuing the growth of the small business sector. Business has to be nurtured and assisted by the Scottish Government, not to have the builders of these businesses, the creators of jobs, the risk takers, threatened with more tax than fellow entrepreneurs in other parts of the UK. Setting up and establishing a small business is rarely easy. As an accountant and from personal experience, I know only too well how hard this can be. People who are not in business often do not appreciate the challenges that are actually involved. Men and women trying at the expense of working long hours, often with no holidays for years on end, and limited access to benefits at time of sickness or maternity. Many businesses struggle to get established. Some, sadly, don't make it for various reasons. But every person that I know who attempted to set up a business gave it a good go. Often with odds and bureaucracy stacked against them, some sunk every penny they had to the extent of remortgaging their homes into trying to make a success of their dream. Those who have succeeded are now businesses serving our local communities, 
creating jobs and paying taxes. It is great that Small Business Saturday puts the spotlight on those who serve our communities throughout the year. Shops and service providers that we too often take for granted. Small businesses, which are the lifeblood of town and village centres, not only throughout central Scotland, but the rest of Scotland, offer the sort of personal service that has been lost by many of the large businesses and superstores. In an age when more and more supermarket checkouts are a machine telling you, please scan again, or when many in our society are not comfortable to give their credit card numbers to a computer screen, the personal contact offered by small businesses is a real lifeline to many people. The human touch and personal service still go a long way. From the corner shopkeeper who is a friend and confidant to many in the local community, to the hairdresser providing an at-home service to the elderly and housebound, to the local butcher with his ever helpful serving suggestions, small business has a vital social role to play as well as an economic one. I wish Small Business Saturday every success. Many of the novel initiatives from business the length and breadth of Scotland that I have read on the internet are testimony to the creativity and imagination of the sector. I join others in the hope that this Saturday and indeed throughout the year constituents value their small businesses and heed the adage that is of course true to every business, use them or lose them. I urge local people to support their local businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And firstly, thank you uh, very much to Ash Denham uh, for the opportunity to talk about uh, small business. I'm immediately jealous of her uh, access to a sweetie shop. Um, I was six years old before I could go to the sweetie shop without my ration card. Uh, I didn't, I certainly didn't. There are four of us in the parliament that would be true for. Um, <laughs> Like others, uh, I use small businesses. Uh, my journey down uh, this week, I travelled uh, from Gillian Martin's constituency from the station at Inverurie, and I dropped in at the Coco Works uh, restaurant, uh, little, little cafe, uh, and had my lunch. A lovely a toasty salad and a latte. Absolutely excellent. Uh, a tiny little business that serves a real local need, if only it's only my digestion. And there are wonderful examples in the northeast of Scotland. Uh, I have in my constituency uh, a, a, a relatively small fish processor who does uh, smoked salmon. Now, nothing uncommon about that, but they actually buy uh, old whiskey barrels from the distilleries and use the wood from the whiskey barrels to smoke the salmon. And you can actually tell what brand of whiskey it is when you taste the smoked salmon. Excellent initiative. Um, and on Monday too, I visited Granny's Bake, which has just opened in the last uh, few weeks in Straight Path in Banff, uh, uh, to buy eclairs uh, for Gary, who works for me in my office in Peterhead. So Gary, when the eclairs there on your desk tomorrow for your birthday, it came from Granny's Bakes uh, in Banff. They are just examples Every one of us will have examples of wonderful entrepreneurship and innovation. And uh, Small Business Saturday is, of course, not just one Saturday for them. One thing, it's the fifth year it's been going on, but it's about the accumulation uh, of efforts by the FSB uh, and others to promote small businesses around the UK. Another part of the program, Small Business 100. It's a list of 100 small businesses, uh, one being featured in each of the 100 days leading up to the main event. And uh, there are lots of uh, examples. My uh, assistant has identified in Richard Lockhead's constituency in Fochabers, a haberdashery and fabric store in Fochabers that uh, is participating in that. These businesses are, as we've heard, a challenge to people who run them. This is not an easy thing to do. It's not something I've ever done. It's not even something I've ever contemplated doing. Uh, and when I meet small business people, uh, I find that their experience isn't such as we'd suck me in. But they're in a vital part of our social and economic infrastructure in many of the communities in the northeast of Scotland uh, and across Scotland. Supporting local commerce, a vital cog there. Small businesses with people committed to customer service. Because if they ain't, it ain't going to work. 
And that, in the modern world where so much of our interactions with businesses is relatively abstract or online, there's no human involved, it makes a real difference. But the businesses too are going online. Granny's Bake may have only been started a few weeks. They're going online in the new year and I wish them every success and I wish everyone who participates in Small Business Saturday every success. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Mr Stevenson. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Claire Hockey. Presiding officer, I'd like to start by thanking Ash Denham for once again bringing this debate to the Chamber this year and for her excellent speech. It's undoubtedly been an opportunity for every member to be very parochial and talk about their local shops, and I'm going to be no different. Um, but Small Business Saturday shows how important small businesses are to our economy, and I have no doubt that it will be a great success again this year. Now, small and medium-sized enterprises account for 99% of all of Scotland's businesses. They provide 1.2 million jobs. They make up 55% of private sector employment. So these businesses are important, not just to our local economies and our high streets, but to the Scottish economy more widely. Last year's campaign had a huge impact on small businesses, and we know it certainly encouraged people to shop locally. Something like 717 million pounds was spent on Small Business Saturday alone. I was responsible for a small portion of that. But as Ash Denham said, that's a 15% increase on the year before. So let's make this year an even greater success. Now, one of the greatest challenges facing small businesses in our communities is in fact our changing shopping habits. The majority of people shop online. You only need to look at what was going on on Black Friday and Cyber Monday to understand the truth of that. Or they shop at real retail parks outside of the town centre and the consequences of these changing habits are clear to see on our high streets. So if we care about our high streets, and we do, we need to make more of an effort to reverse this trend and we need to shop local, not just on Small Business Saturday, as other members have said, but all year round. I am grateful to have so many wonderful small businesses in my constituency. This comes the advert. Last year, I had the pleasure of visiting Callaghan's, a butcher in Helensburgh, Lily's florist in Alexandria, and Wilkie and Ryder in Dumbarton, a local optician and jewelers. The year before, I went to Gowns and Crowns Wedding Shop and Scruples Cafe in Dumbarton East. And this year, I'm excited to visit Adarden in Cardras. Adarden is a local farm which has a farm shop and visitor's cafe attached. I have to confess I am a frequent visitor and I would recommend it to all members because they have the most amazing local produce and the cafe is a particular favourite with my staff. But Adarden is just one of the small businesses in my constituency. There are so many more. I'm resisting the temptation to do as other members have done and name them all and even give you their website addresses. We would be here all day, presiding officer. But in Western Berkshire alone, there are over 2,000 small and medium-sized enterprises employing over 10,000 staff, and I want every single one of them to do well, because the better they do, the more our local economy will flourish. I am grateful that Western Bartonshire Council has taken action to address the visible decline on the high street. A decision by the previous Labour administration means that they are moving their council headquarters right into the heart of the town centre, bringing more than 600 staff onto our high street. And that footfall will make a difference. Because already we've seen businesses starting up on the back of that promise. And I hope that when the offices open in the new year, it will encourage many more businesses to locate on the high street in Dumbarton. I'd like to pay tribute to the local chambers of commerce and the many volunteers who sit on town centre forums to support small businesses on our high streets. And I'd also, in closing, presiding officer, like to pay tribute to the FSB. The FSB provide vital support to small businesses across Scotland. They are a powerful campaigning voice for business owners up and down the country and help them to flourish even in the most difficult times. Presiding officer, let's encourage shoppers to shop local, put these businesses in the spotlight this Saturday and every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Claire Hockey to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, presiding officer. And I would also like to thank Ash Denham for bringing this debate to the chamber. Small businesses are the lifeblood of Scotland's economy and they're the backbone of our communities across the country. 
Whilst multinational companies and superstores with well-established reputations can all too often be the default choice for many consumers, small businesses are woven into the fabric of our society. They keep our high streets alive and they provide a variety of bespoke and artisan services that large companies cannot compete with. Scottish Government figures showed that SMEs account for 55% of the private sector employment and 40% of private sector turnover, providing much needed local jobs and in turn economic growth in our communities. Last year my Rutherglen constituency was the home of around 1,600 registered businesses, the vast majority of which were small businesses of all varieties. From mobile food outlets at fun fairs and parks run by the Tom Thomas family to Evisa Hair and Beauty, from Sweet Pea and Pandora's Box gift shops to Raisin Joinery Company. A huge variety of small businesses catering to the needs of locals and visitors, but also driving the local economy. Presiding officer, SMEs are local job creators, but they can be set aside from some larger companies in the way they give back to the communities they proudly serve. One such business in my constituency is the Tea Bay on Campus Lang Main Street. Angeline Coyle, the proprietor, not only runs a first-class tea room, but she's a pillar of the community. Angeline does a great deal of work with Cambus Lang Community Council, and she's one of the strongest voices advocating positive change in the town centre. She, along with the other local business owners, have been pushing South Lanarkshire Council to tackle the problems of inadequate parking on the main street, arguing that customers will frequently shop elsewhere due to the lack of parking spaces. The TB was recently the subject of a review by the Sunday Post, who highlighted the community spirit of the cafe. The author of the review noted that whilst in the tea room, Angeline gave a woman a free coffee. On querying this with Angeline, she advised her that the woman was known to her from a local homeless centre and that she regularly provides residents with a free hot drink and food should they need it. Regulars and new customers are treated as friends. And this is especially welcomed by those who live on their own or who have little social company. Along with other small business owners in Cambus Lang, she's worked closely with Cambus Lang and Bloom, who've done an incredible job in revamping the appearance of the main street by adding colour with an assortment of flowers, plants and trees. Urban Alfresco, another Cambus Lang small business, provided much of the plants and equipment for the project. I visited the TB last week and had a chat with Angeline, who said that in addition to running the cafe, she probably devotes around two full working days per week serving the community. Many large businesses do undertake work locally. However, the personal touches from our small businesses like the TB are what keeps our communities alive and thriving. A little under four miles away in Blantyre, my constituent Brian Calderwood runs a small deli called Stacks. Just like Angeline, Brian is a true community champion. On New Year's Day morning, while many larger stores open late or not at all, Stax is open and Brian will provide a free breakfast for the homeless and people in need. Brian would never let anyone go hungry and he's always conscious to help locals if they're needing a helping hand. Stax is close to local schools and so Brian has a great rapport with the pupils who visit regularly and he'll keep an eye out on the kids, watching if they don't have enough money for lunch and then he'll help them out discreetly so that no one else notices. Presiding officer Angeline and Brian don't openly broadcast their good deeds. They don't look for any recognition. The help, the help they give is done without fanfare or announcement. However, their communities are well aware of the great work they do. And on behalf of them, I'd like to say thank you. And to the many other small businesses who through their time, generosity and their kindness make the lives of their fellow citizens a little bit easier. Our small businesses support local people and local projects and without them our communities would be worse off. Small Business Saturday may be only one day in the calendar year, however it should act as a reminder to shop small and shop locally all year round. Thank you. Alison Johnson to be followed by Graeme Day. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to debate Small Business Saturday and I thank Ash Denham for securing the time. This weekend will be one of the busiest of the year with small businesses across the country hoping it translates into a strong few weeks of sales in the run-up to Christmas. Now in its fifth year, Small Business Saturday is an excellent initiative to highlight the importance of supporting our local shops, family businesses, small manufacturers and all other kinds of small independent businesses. Not just during this crucial period as we've heard, but all year round. And as Alison Harris said, you know, small business is about much more than business that chance to have a, 
a chat. It may be the only opportunity that some people might have in a day. Um, the know-how about the products. You know, folk in small businesses get what they're selling. They have real expertise. And I think it's really important that, that we do get out there and do what we can to support, to support them this Saturday. But to ensure our small businesses really flourish and our high streets really benefit from increased footfall and trade, our towns and cities need to be designed in a way to create really healthy, vibrant local high streets that allow pedestrians, cyclists and those on public transport and those with mobility issues to move around freely and safely. To maximise access to the high street, it's really important that we, the Parliament, that the government and local authorities continue to work together with our communities to make sure they've got the bus and rail services that they need to invest properly in active travel to boost the numbers of people who are walking and cycling round our high streets because when that happens, business is boosted. Gets rid of air pollution too. Um, and as you know, my colleague Mark Ruskell is progressing his 20 mile per hour bill and I think that would have a really positive impact on the atmosphere and the environment in our local high streets as well. Um, I, I, local members have done a very good job in selling local businesses in their area. I think it's fair to say that there are many fantastic small businesses in Edinburgh and across Lothian. They're vital to our local economy. Big retailers have got no incentive to prevent their profits leaking out of the local economy. And we need to do everything we can to provide small independent businesses with a level playing field. Money spent in a local business will benefit local people and services not distant shareholders. So let's work to see public bodies use more of their procurement budgets to benefit local firms and more support for small and micro businesses. Gillian Martin mentioned them. And let's make sure we're doing everything we can so that everyone's got access to, to broadband at a good speed. You know, so we can reach across Scotland to keep small businesses connected and to let them reach more customers. The Small Business Saturday campaign conducted a UK bus tour again this year. It stopped in Edinburgh in October and it gave people a chance to learn more about the initiative. And this year also saw the launch of the Small Business Saturday mentoring programme on the bus, offering free business mentoring to small businesses at each stop. It was launched after feedback from small businesses and it will continue into next year, encouraging communities develop, to develop their own mentoring programmes for experienced small businesses to share the knowledge that they've gathered with others. I think this kind of information and knowledge sharing is, is really important. It gives me great hope that our local high streets want to work together in that positive way. Um, to name but a few, I'll be heading to, to my local high streets this Saturday. I hope to drop into Collington Arts, where local art is at the heart of the business. The stunning dandelion and ginger and toll cross go there. They really do turn Small Business Saturday into quite an event. The Edinburgh Bookshop in Brunsfield, who have won too many awards to name in the time I have remaining. So I will continue to do all that I can to encourage local business in Lothian to register with and take part in the campaign. So let's all shop local this Saturday and every Saturday, do all that we can to publicize the efforts of making this coming Small Business Saturday such an important fixture in our calendar. Thank you. Thank you. I call Graham Dee to be followed by Liam Kerr. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, can I begin, as others have, by congratulating my colleague Ash Denham on securing this debate, which provides an excellent opportunity for me to follow others in highlighting the importance of small businesses across Scotland, and in particular in Angus, where around 4,000 SMEs provide employment for in the region of 20,000 people. This year's Small Business Saturday will take me to Sacred Grounds Coffee in Arbroath. Sacred Grounds is Angus's only coffee roastery. It sources premium beans from ethical and sustainable sources before roasting them, them to the highest standards. The company started operating in December 2015 and is building a reputation for quality excellence and attention to detail. I look forward to meeting Catherine Baker and her team, although I'm currently working out how I break the news that I'm not a coffee drinker myself without upsetting them. Secret Grounds, like so many SMEs, the length and breadth of Angus has received vital support from the Economic Development Department of the Council. My experience, rightly or wrongly, it's quite rare these days to hear council departments proactively and universally praised. But this one is, and I think that reflects well on Alison Smith and her team. Presiding officer, let me offer one further SME success story from my Angus South constituency, one this time out with 
the highly successful food and drink sector. But before those doing so, I should refer colleagues to my register of interest as I'm a season ticket holder at Cumbrusty Golf Links. That is relevant because I want to highlight the work of Blair Precision Engineering. The company started manufacturing steel master tines in 1987 after Canoosti Golf Links approached the company looking for uh, custom shapes and sizes of tines to fit their ration machines. The firm's tines are now used by greenkeepers and groundsmen all over Europe on everything from championship golf courses to pitch and putts, premiership football grounds and country parks. Headed up by Managing Director Alan Jeans, Blair Precision's focus until recently had been on the domestic market, but now the company is looking to export its products and looking to the Southern Hemisphere in particular because that would help address the seasonality of the company's order books. Presiding officer, the necessary support being provided to small uh, businesses in, in Angus isn't just confined to that on offer from the Council's economic development team. I was extremely pleased to see the latest figures for backing being provided to local businesses by the Scottish Government under the Small Business Bonus Scheme. Those figures show that the number of businesses in Angus benefiting from this rates release rose from 2,475 in 2016-17 to 2,536 in 2017-18, and that compares with a figure of 1,854 in 2008-9. All told, the scheme delivered £4.9 million of relief in 2017, up from £4.1 million the previous year and £1.8 million in 2008-2009. And whilst I do think there is an element of small businesses who have been benefiting from this backing over many years now, taking it for granted, there's no doubt as to its value and the extent to which it remains appreciated by the majority of beneficiaries. One small business owner described it to me as being the difference between surviving those early years when we were establishing ourselves and well failing. Um, in light of just how much the small business scheme means to my constituency, can I say in passing how amazed I was to learn that Richard Leonard's manifesto for the Labour leadership questioned the continuation of the scheme? I do hope that just as he's come to realise that Scottish water is already publicly owned, so he will recognise how deeply damaging removing the SBS would be to local economies, not to mention our small town high streets such as those in Angus. Presiding officer, as a number of colleagues have highlighted, while Small Business Saturday provides a focal point for highlighting the importance of small businesses, there is, of course, a more long-lasting message to be taken away as we approach Christmas, which is that small businesses are there and deserving of our support 365 days of the year, not just on Small Business Saturday. Presiding officer. Thank you. And just before I call Mr Kerr, uh, due to the a uh, high level of interest in this debate, I'm minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 814.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. Could I invite Ash Denham to move such a notice? Formally moved. Thank you very much. I put the question to uh, the Chamber that we extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Can I call Liam Kerr to be followed by David Torrance? Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to speak in this debate and I also thank Ash Denham for lodging the motion. I wasn't meant to be speaking in this debate, but I kicked my colleague off because like Stuart Stevenson, Gillian Martin and Graham Day, I'm very keen to talk up the North East and the con contribution of local enterprises. I should declare an interest, of course, as I run a small business providing employment law advice and solutions to Aberdeen and beyond under the law agency banner. Uh, but just like Lily Norris, of Lily Hunter Consulting and Linda Beattie at First Employment Law in Aberdeen who do an equally good and possibly better job. According to the Federation of Small Businesses, as of 2017 in Angus, Aberdeen City and Shire, there are 26,190 small businesses which employ under 50 employees and around 800 which employ between 50 and 249. Now we need to look after them as, again, according to the FSB, 40% of Scotland's private sector turnover can be attributed to SMEs and provide four out of five private sector jobs in areas like rural Angus and Aberdeenshire. Now, many of those businesses have already visited smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com to sign their businesses up for free and without obligation to promote themselves for this Saturday's big event. So how will I spend it? Well, the same as you, if you come and visit the area. I'll start in Montrose, where I shall take breakfast at Rosie's Pavilion Cafe at Melville Gardens. From there, it's a short walk to the Flower Pavilion to pick up a bouquet to congratulate my wife on securing another sale of one of the hats she makes and sells from her Miss Muirhead Millinery Facebook site. Then over to Rust, which is a concept homeware store in the old rope works, which is an extraordinary centre for homeware, upcycled furniture and gifts, and interior design, but as art. 
If you don't know what I mean, come up and check it for yourself. From there, I'll pick up the ScotRail to Stonehaven. That's not a small business, of course, but it is vital for the Northeast, and it does a good job. The new high-speed trains coming in look great, and if Alex Hines wants to email me and tell me we're getting the full 20 cycle spaces that were promised, I promise I'll say even more nice things about ScotRail in the next relevant debate. So to Stonehaven, where it is straight to Nicky's Cafe on Market Square for a great lunch. I better sort out my evening, so a quick dive round to the Cool Gourmet Bakery, and Charles McCarty Butcher should do the trick. I'll need a few drinks for Saturday evening, so it's up to see my old friend Murray at Donotter Wines. Now, I think it's fair to say that Murray's politics are about as far from mine as it's possible to get. But, but it, <laughs> that's cruel. His inability, Murray's inability to see sense, though, is more than compensated for by his encyclopedic knowledge of wine and ales. And then I'll stop off at Ali Bali to do some early Christmas shopping. The company which employs 18 mostly local people offers customers a unique array of contemporary and designer jewelry. And I've just realized that I've just told my wife what Christmas present she's getting this year. However, finally it's back to Aberdeen to pick up my car from AW Autotech next to Pitodri, where Alan will remind me again that I agreed to host the Blast from the Past Vintage Car Festival for him at Sainston on the 21st of July next year. You can find it on Facebook to enter your car or book tickets. Gillian Martin, I look forward to seeing you there. Then a quick jaunt to see Gordon Bell Pianos to thank Gordon for the excellent Yamaha U3 he sold me in August and compliment him on the perfect setup that he delivered. Now, all of that is why I'm delighted to support Small Business Saturday this weekend. I wish all small businesses a very successful day and urge every member of parliament and indeed everyone outside it who can to go to smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com and support their local small businesses, not just this Saturday, but the whole year round. Thank you. Thank you. I call David Torrance to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Ash Denham for bringing this motion to Parliament today to celebrate the fifth Small Business Saturday. We hear a lot about big business and industries in this chamber, but small businesses are the engine of the Scottish economy. Four and five private sector jobs in rural areas of Scotland are provided by small and medium-sized businesses. They account for 99% of all businesses in Scotland, with micro-businesses alone accounting for half a million jobs. This number is increased in post-devolution, with over 100,000 more businesses now than in 2000. These figures highlight the crucial importance of small businesses in our economy and society. Following the economic downturn the world has faced in the last 10 years, small businesses in Scotland have proven themselves relatively resilient by creating jobs and looking for new markets to expand by taking on additional employees. While the economic potential of small businesses is often the topic for discussion, I'd like to highlight the importance of small businesses in supporting an inclusive and diverse workforce. The role of smaller businesses in helping to achieve more inclusive employment is often overlooked. Smaller businesses are more likely to facilitate pathways to employment for marginalised groups by creating jobs in disadvantaged communities across Scotland, with around 50% having hired people who were unemployed. Additionally, over half of small businesses in Scotland pay their employees above the living wage. Over 40% of those working in the private sector work for a small business and have a substantial role in creating a more inclusive economy, diversifying it to include both rural and urban areas. In addition, the informal and flexible working environment of smaller businesses leads to a higher job satisfaction. In fact, employees in smaller businesses are the most satisfied group of workers in the labour market. In addition, the Scottish Government's Small Business Bonus Scheme has helped a variety of small businesses thrive in local high streets by removing many of them from business rates and allowing them to flourish. flourish. Local councils can also pr provide additional relief. This has proved successful in certain parts of the country to regenerate small local high streets and keep them in place, supporting them through economic hardships. It's important that we continue to support our local businesses. For every pound that is spent in local independent businesses, over 60% of that money stays in the local economy. I'd like to specifically highlight Kirkcaldy for All, the business improvement district who have been helping to support and develop Kirkcaldy Town Centre since its establishment in 2010. The effects of the economic recession and the change of retail habits for customers has undoubtedly impacted on Kirkcaldy Town Centre, as with many other high streets across wider Scotland. The current economic times are challenging and extremely competitive, so it is vital that the town centres and small businesses do not lose out. 
Kirkcaldy for All provide businesses with a voice and provides invaluable guidance and support. We facilitate the cooperation of businesses such as restaurants, retail shops, cafes, health and wellbeing centres, as well as specialised services to work together in order to identify collective opportunities for investment for their own benefit, as well as the benefit of the wider area. We have been successful in creating a well-promoted, lively, diverse and dynamic environment that I am proud to represent. As a founder member of Growing Kirkcaldy, we have also played a major role in the town's continued success at both beautiful Fife Awards and beautiful Scotland Awards as they enhance Kirkcaldy and encourage visitors to the town. Since their inception, the group has been instrumental in securing and organising many large-scale events, including the Halfers Tour Series, Fife's very first Pride Festival and the UK's only Beach Highland Games all of which have attracted an amazing number of visitors to the town, increasing business footfall and boosting sales. In conclusion, presiding officer, small businesses play an increasingly vital part in high streets and town centres. In many cases, large retailers have abandoned the high streets for retail parks on the outskirts of towns. However, this creates opportunities for small businesses by opening up space for local businesses. This is why it is crucial to support small businesses, not only on Small Business Saturday, but throughout the whole year and encourage people to visit our high streets and town centres to support their local economies. Thank you. I call Daniel Johnson to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I too would like to thank Ash Denham for bringing forward this motion uh, because as a former independent retailer, I do feel this debate is somewhat made for me. The only issue is, is that the declaration of interest is somewhat of a of a, a large hurdle I have to overcome, being a, a director of a business with interest in independent retailers uh, in the city centre of Edinburgh. And I would like to remind members if, for whatever reason, I, I, I lead people to think that there aren't other options for creative independent card shops in Edinburgh, that's uh, entirely a misunderstanding. And there is a, a wide range of businesses that you can uh, uh, custom. But look, this is a fantastic opportunity because I think independent business is really important. And it's something that's really important to my constituency. Um, indeed, as a member of the FSB, I'd like to thank them for the briefing they provided all members. And through today, they, they've been both briefing and tweeting. In their tweet, I noticed that they asked two questions. First of all, what was the best high street for independent uh, retail uh, in, in Scotland? And I have to say, I assume that's a rhetorical question. Because it's very obvious to me that it's uh, Morningside Road and Brunsfield Place. Because I think there is no better example of, of uh, two flourishing high streets full of uh, independent retailers. The only issue is that the second question, because I just think because they are so full of such fantastic creative independent retail businesses, it would be unfair of me to single any particular uh, businesses out. And, but what I would do is, is encourage uh, all members that if they have some time while in this fantastic city uh, to, to, to visit those high streets because they really are fin fantastic uh, venues for shopping. Indeed, I think it's something of a testament to, to their success that while uh, across Scotland one in ten retail units lies unlet, literally units on Morningside Road really don't lie empty for uh, any more than a matter of weeks. Indeed, I think it was, some, it was something of a surprise to me when I noted from, again from the FSB figures that Edinburgh as a whole has almost 18,000 small businesses employing 70,000. In fact, that's higher than any other local authority in Scotland, including Glasgow, which I think is really quite uh, a, a something of a testament to the success and thriving economy for, for small independent businesses in the city. But these are challenging times. Uh, for retail. This, the last decade has been particularly difficult for many retail businesses right the way across the country. And that's why Small Business Saturday is so important, that we recognise and celebrate their success and encourage people to shop. Because I think, ultimately, independent re uh, retail provides a much better shopping experience. As a, a former uh, you know, small business owner and retailer, I always felt that it's small businesses are businesses with personality. They have a, a point of view, a sense of creativity and fun. And at this time of year when we are seeking to buy presents for our loved ones, it's exactly those sorts of businesses that you want to be buying your gift from. A business that has a bit of personality because after all it is the thought that counts. So don't do the unthinking thing and shop in a bland multinational chain retailer. Use your local high street, use your local independent retailers because it makes a much more thoughtful present. But I would just like to make two small political points. You know, first of all, 
that retail does need looked after. I think it was striking in the evidence that the Economy Committee has recently that the enterprise agencies simply aren't supporting uh, retail in particular. It's a very small proportion of what they do. And I think we need a much greater emphasis on supporting these businesses because they do employ so many people. And if we want to see an increase in productivity, we have to see that productivity in, uh, uh, through businesses such as retail and certainly through SME um, businesses as a whole. And the other point I would like to, to add is that we must also think about retail workers. Um, and as members may be aware, I am bringing forward a bill to protect retail workers because this is a challenging time of year, but it's also a, a time of year that many retail workers will face um, uh, assault and verbal abuse, which is something that we shouldn't tolerate. So if members think that's important, I would urge them to support my forthcoming bill. And at that point, I will close. Thank you very much for signing up. Thank you very much, and I call Stuart McMillan. Thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, I too I want to congratulate Ash Denham for securing uh, this uh, important members' debate, and I'm delighted to be taking part uh, in this debate about the Small Business Saturday, and also would like to thank the FSB for their uh, information that they have provided. Uh, certainly, this Small Business Saturday is one simple aim, and that's to celebrate and also support small businesses in our communities, and also what they do for our communities. As we know, it's in the motion that Small Business Saturday started in 2010 in the US and it's now in its fifth year in the UK and its, its contribution to the economy it has been massively helpful with 80% of local authorities also across the UK actively supporting the campaign last year. In 2016, with uh, £717 million being spent on Small Business Saturday, uh, that was up 15% from, from, uh, from 2015 with tens of millions of pounds spent with the independent businesses here in Scotland and specifically it's had that positive effect on the economy of Inverclyde and my constituency of Greenock and Inverclyde and also other parts of the country and by and certainly we've also heard from some colleagues today about uh, how important it is for their particular communities and certainly as a member for Greenock and Inverclyde I genuinely and wholeheartedly welcome the contribution that Small Business Saturday actually provides and certainly as a small and medium-sized companies account for 99% of all of Scotland's businesses, Small Business Saturday reaches millions of customers every single year. Well, these firms provide 1.2 million jobs, 55% of the private sector employment, and additional data also shows that there were 365,000 private sector businesses operating in Scotland during 2017, that was up 3% from 2016. In Inverclyde alone, uh, there were 1,710 local uh, small and medium-sized businesses operating and providing employment to approximately 9,610 people. Now, whether this is from Jumbo in Port Glasgow down to the cottage in Greenock, uh, which makes a fabulous Mac burger, uh, which I encourage anyone who goes to Greenock to pop into the cottage, to McCaskey's uh, Butchers down uh, in Weems Bay, which is an award-winning butchers, um, heading back up the road to, to, into the Inverkit Marine area where there are plenty of small businesses dealing with marine tourism sector and then finishing off on Kempock Street and Shore Street in Gurukh. The vast, vast majority of shops in Kempock Street and Shore Street are small independent traders and uh, there has been a, a huge amount of investment there in recent years to help regenerate uh, Gurukh. And certainly, I'll, uh, Daniel Johnson, I'm, I'm sure Kempick Street would give Morningside Road a huge run for its money in terms of the, the best street to shop uh, in the country. Certainly, Small Business Saturday highlights the benefits, highlights the benefits of going to our towns and villages as well as our cities instead of shopping online. And certainly, as one of the members who actually has an Amazon warehouse in, the, in this constituency, I generally uh, appreciate how important uh, Amazon can actually be, but I also absolutely uh, support wholeheartedly uh, the issue of uh, our town centres, our villages, uh, in terms of getting people to go out of their houses and actually go and shop in the shops. Because if they don't, then uh, we will lose uh, even more valuable jobs in our high streets. I generally am com uh, committed uh, to the small business sector in Inverclyde and also in Scotland. And uh, certainly one aspect of this, it was Alison Johnson touched upon the, the issue of the, uh, the small businesses and Graham Day spoke about the small, the small business bonus, certainly in Inverclyde. 2008, we had 604 businesses benefiting from the small business bonus scheme. That's now up to 1,063 businesses contributing one, an extra £2.6 million to the economy. Presiding officer, I feel the support of the small business sector in Greenwich and Inverclyde and I would like to welcome everybody to come to Greenwich and Inverclyde to do some of your Christmas shopping. You will have a very warm welcome uh, and certainly bring your friends because you will have a day to remember. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. And could I now uh, invite the Minister Paul Wheelhouse to uh, respond on behalf of the Government? Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, can I add my thanks to Ash Denham for bringing this very important debate on Small Business Saturday to the Chamber. And I also thank all members across all parties who have taken part because, as, as members have demonstrated, this is vitally important because it shines a light on the need of the small business community. Uh, we do this maybe per, but once a year in this format, but as a number of members have said, this is about a debate which is, applies 365 days of the year. And while we're talking about the run into Christmas, clearly I think it's important to all of us uh, that we see businesses supported throughout the year. Well, Small Business Saturday gives us a, a great glimpse of the fantastic uh, range of small businesses across Scotland. We've got a really good taste of it today with all the contributions from members in the Chamber. And I, I have to thank um, Stuart Stevenson in particular and, and, and Stuart McMillan, those two Stuarts, for making me feel extremely hungry with some of the uh, examples they've given. Uh, both, uh, sadly, I, I can't travel today to Bam from Buchan to get a, 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 a produce from there, but um, I could maybe order online from Granny's Bakery, which is, sounds promising. But um, it does help demonstrate the variety and the vital contribution they make to our economy. It also reminds us of the importance of supporting small businesses, the lifeblood of our economy, as members have said, with our spending powers as consumers, as Ash Denham has stated. And the Scottish Government welcomes a Small Business Saturday campaign. Uh, the campaign itself encourages people to support their local businesses, of course, which are, as we say, so vitally important to local communities. It's a great example of partnership working across the public and private sectors within local communities, and I warmly welcome, as members have done, the commitment of the Federation of Small Businesses and our local authority partners, including Business Gateway Services, which uh, I know Graham Day mentioned in particular in Angus, and I commend the work that he identified there. Um, I, I commend all those partners for the campaign and commend all members, including ministerial colleagues, uh, for their promotion of Small Business Saturday uh, this week. The campaign helps to raise the profile, of course, of small individual small businesses. Hopefully, it also helps to raise their income, as a number of members have, have claimed, including uh, Jackie Bailey. I, I joined Jackie Bailey in, in, in uh, confessing that I contributed to beer consumption through the uh, small businesses last year with Tempest Brewery and the Borders. But Small Business Saturday is now in its fifth year, as uh, Alison Johnson and Stuart Stevenson mentioned initially. It, con it continues to grow in impact, with 2016 seeing a 15% increase in sales on the year before. And those involved in the campaign um, worked tirelessly throughout the year to ensure its success. And in some respects, that um, reflects the tirelessness of those working in small businesses, as Ash Denham identified, with the, the great pride in their businesses, but working extremely hard. Uh, and Alison Harris also identified that. There are great sacrifices made by people who run small businesses, and we have to recognize that. And in the run-up to the day, Small Business Saturday highlights a range of small businesses in the Small Biz 100. Nine Scottish businesses featured this year, from Kelso, Dumfries, Barhead, Anstruther, Fockerbers, uh, Aboyne, Motherwell, South Lanarkshire, and Dunbar. And these businesses operated in sectors as diverse as food and drink to creative industries, and I congratulate all of them for making the list. Uh, I will. I have a uh, key. Thank you. I thank the Minister for taking this intervention. Um, would the Minister be aware that according to a recent FSB report, which constituency saw a 43% increase in the number of local businesses, the, high, the second highest in the whole of Scotland? I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to hazard a guess, Presiding Officer, <laughs> that might be Glasgow <laughs> Proven, but I'll, I'll see if uh, <laughs> Mr McKee confirms that. Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, I'm, I'm, uh, congratulations to all in, in, in Glasgow Proven for that. Um, I, uh, I, I certainly um, know that, uh, like others in the Chamber, I plan to be out on the Small Business Saturday itself. Uh, this, this Saturday, visiting small businesses in my region, uh, Tartan and Tweed and Gala Shields, uh, and I'll be hoping to top up some of my uh, kilt, uh, kilt accompaniments, and um, Reb's motorcycles in Tweed Bank, uh, although I have to confirm for my mum in case she's watching this, I'm not planning on riding a motorbike, uh, she's always telling me not to do that, but you never know, I might get, in, uh, get a shot. I, I know the Cabinet Secretary for the Economy, Jobs and Fair Work also plans to visit uh, Newfangled Glass in Alloa on Friday and the Minister for Employment, Employability and Training will also be out and about visiting Castle Comics and Sparkling Flowers both in Cumbernauld. And as I said earlier, I know other Ministers will be taking part. I hope this year builds on the success of previous years in raising the profile of small businesses, the length and breadth of Scotland and this debate has made clear just what a vital part of the economy small businesses are. Uh, as others have said, there are over 365,000 small businesses operating in Scotland, an increase of over 11,000 since March last year. 
And Ash, as Ash Denham has said, small and medium-sized firms account for 99.4% of all Scotland's enterprises and provide 1.2 million jobs. These jobs are in local communities. As members have said, Alison Johnson has said and others, um, it is a really important point that the, the lower leakage from, from local businesses, they tend to recycle services, use local electricians, local uh, plumbers and so forth for their premises. These jobs contribute to inclusive growth and to prosperity. But while we celebrate their successes, we know that it's not always easy. It's not always plain sailing to run a small business. And as Alison Harris rightly identified, there are sadly some businesses that do not succeed. Uh, and we need to support those who go through that process. Often they come back stronger and found uh, new businesses and succeed second time round. And as a government, we're committed to helping these businesses to grow. We want to ensure that, as uh, Alison Harris was calling for, that we nurture them and that Scotland is the best place to do business. And our future economic success very much lies in the strength of our SME community. We offer a range of support to small, help small businesses through Business Gateway, uh, as Graeme Day identified, and other enterprise agencies. And we also offer support to small and micro businesses in Scotland, helping them to start up, survive and grow. And last year, nearly 700,000 people visited the Business Gateway website, an increase of 13% from last year. So I hope that's a sign of increased interest in starting a business. Uh, and nearly 2.6 million pages of business advice were accessed. And last year, Business Gateway helped nearly 11,000 new businesses to start up. So I want to thank all those who operate length and breadth of the country in providing those vital services. Um, it's crucial that viable SMEs can access a range of finance, of course, to start up and grow their businesses. And despite current levels of business support, more is needed. So we are investing in, uh, in our future through the Scottish Growth Scheme, targeting over three years high growth, innovative and export focused SMEs. And Graeme Dean did give a good example of a precision engineering company that's uh, widening its net and not just uh, servicing uh, Carnoustie Golf Course, but now looking to export. And we'd certainly encourage that and, and look to support companies uh, in, in doing that in the future. Um, I could spend time talking about business rates. I think that's been covered um, by colleagues in the chamber. Uh, suffice to say that we continue to look to see how we can continue to keep business rates uh, environment as competitive as possible. And obviously we've had a debate today in the chamber around one specific aspect of that. But before closing, I want to briefly touch on wider work being undertaken to promote entrepreneurship. Given that our prosperity depends on successful new ideas and new businesses being created here in Scotland, then it, then it stands to reason that entrepreneurs will be fundamental to generating jobs and future economic growth. Over the last four years, we've worked with partners across the public, private and third sectors to develop and further the Scotland Can Do approach. It sets out our shared ambition for Scotland to be a world leader in enterprise and innovation, and it aims to ensure that people in every part of Scotland have the confidence, encouragement and support they need to become entrepreneurs. And I think today's debate, if it shows anything, is there's huge political support across the chamber for those small businesses uh, and those who lead them. Uh, I very much welcome the opportunity to recognise Small Business Saturday campaign today and to celebrate the success of small businesses across Scotland. I'm sure this year will build on the success of previous years, recognising the vibrancy and vitality of our Scottish small business community. And as all, almost all members have highlighted, and I'm sure we'd all agree, shop locally this Saturday, but please also support your local businesses throughout the year. Thank you very much, presiding officer. Thank you very much. I'm going to thank the Minister and all the members for their contribution and Ash Denham for bringing the debate. And I now close this meeting.